Okay, the regular council meeting, Monday, November the 2nd, 2015, 7 p.m. will now come to order. We have a roll call, please. Mayor McLaughlin? Here. Mr. McIntyre? Here. Mr. Zambach? Present. Mr. Reynolds? Here. Mr. Rick Lowry? Here. Mr. Mike Lowry? Here. A little housekeeping before we go on, if you would. If you have a cell phone, if you could please put on vibrate or turn it off. And thank you all for being here this evening. Now, if you'll join me in the invocation, if you stand up, please. Lord, thank you so much for allowing all of us to be here this evening. Thank you for this body that, with the help of New Carlisle citizens, will continue to try and do the best they can for the city of New Carlisle and make it a forward-looking city. Things are getting better. We appreciate that, and we will go forward. Thank you for the beautiful weather, and again, thank you for everything that this body can hopefully do. In the Lord's name, amen. amen. You'll join me now in the back for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to the Republic for which it stands, one, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. May I have action on the regular meeting, on the minutes of the regular meeting on October 19, 2015, please. Action so on the minutes. So That's it. Mr. McIntyre, Mr. Zama. We were waiting on John. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You've been waiting a long time. <laughs> well, it's typically like oh. Any questions on the minutes? Council? Anyone at all? You call for the vote, sir, when you're ready. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Mr. Rick Lowry? Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Mike Lowry? Yes. Mayor McLaughlin? Yes. Mr. McIntyre? Yes. Mr. Zambach? Yes. Pass six to zero. Thank you. Okay, communications are none this evening. So we're now ready for the city manager's report, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, members of the public. I'd like to share with you the city manager's report. The first list on the action report is Twin Creek, and it uh, says I'll have outlined the steps at the 11-16 council meeting. That is the next council meeting two weeks from today. We do have interest in the parcel, so I don't think we're having any issues with that. Again, we just got to make sure that everything's done right. I will be setting up a time to meet with uh, Bill Hoffman from the Clark County Prosecutor's Office this coming week to go over some questions I may have. Um, so uh, we will have a clear um, outline of the steps at the next council meeting, which I'm excited to share with everyone. And uh, moving on down, the fire application period has ended. So I will hand out the list of applicants. Actually, do you mind handing those out? Yep, just hand them out. Get the way. And a lot of people have been waiting for this day to find out who the top three are. Um, so I'll just go ahead and announce those now. We had about 23, 24 applications. Um, we did reissue the posting up for additional week because how that position was posted on monster.com, it was clicked being a full-time position. As a result of that, we got a slew of applications that were quite frankly just overqualified. I did send out letters to those applicants, let them know that it was a part-time job with minimal pay. With that being said, the top three that I have selected to bring into the meet and greet at the next council meeting, and I will give, it, give a disclaimer, there might be one or two added onto that. I will have to go to Elizabeth Township on Tuesday. Since we do contract out with them, I would like them to take a look at these uh, resumes and applications too, and see if they are in agreement with my top three. But the top three I've selected is uh, Steve Trusty, who's a current employee of the fire division. I have also selected Ron Grout and also our former chief, Tracy Young. So those are the top three who will be interviewed for the position. Again, if Elizabeth Township would like to add somebody, I will discuss that with them. But as we stand, Steve Trusty, Ron Grout, and uh, former chief Tracy Young. The candidate pool was pretty solid. Um, it took me a couple hours to go through them. Um, Lots of qualified applications, but we wanted to keep it 
I, I was looking for someone who had prior administration knowledge and experience, that's a given, but also wanted somebody who's been in the loop as to the circumstances that have surrounded the fire department in the past year. Um, it's going in the right direction now, and I am confident whoever we choose as a municipality to go forward to lead that fire department will do even a, a better job. So I wish to see everyone back here at the next council meeting. All three of those candidates will be here to field your questions if you have any. How we're going to do that is um, it will be the last item on the agenda. Uh, before the council meeting begins, I will hand out copies of each candidate's resumes. So while we're having our council meeting, uh, audience members can review their resumes and get questions together um, if they would like to ask any of the candidates. Again, I'm very excited about it. Uh, and I just want to get a qualified person in that position so we can uh, move on. Any questions pertaining to that? Council, any questions? <clears throat> Audience, any, any questions for the city manager on that? Good, okay. okay. And moving on uh, with the informational items. I want to give a big thanks to Tras Trussell, Chapman, Dunbar, and Fraley Funeral Home. They were catalysts in us looking into getting the polling location changed for the, uh, for the election day tomorrow. It's unfortunate that they could not change it. We are looking at Trussell Chapman for your future place. The feedback that I got from Board of Elections is that it is big enough for two precincts, but not three. We do have three precincts here in New Carlisle, but moving forward, Mrs. Dunbar really gave up her business for a day, and she was doing it out of the kindness of her heart, and she really put her business on the back burner for the benefit of the citizens of New Carlisle. I did send out a thank you letter on behalf of the city administration and office of the mayor to Mrs. Dunbar for her doing that. Um, so hopefully she'll get that letter soon. Uh, again, I mentioned this at the last council meeting. I just want our citizens to know that our leaf pickup is back. The schedule is on the attachment uh, as an attachment with the packet. So please take a look at that and uh, call and get your name on the list. And upcoming, some big things we got coming up here for this uh, city administration is we have sheriff negotiations coming up. I sent an email out to Sheriff Kelly uh, late last week to get a date set. Uh, he has not returned that yet, so I'm assuming he is going through his calendar to see what availability he has. Uh, but as soon as we have some details on that, I'll be more than happy to share it with everyone. And also, our employees are unionized, so we have the union negotiations, union negotiations coming up with those as well. Uh, and the last item up for informational is the health stats, and those are attached. Um, so if you have any questions on those, just, um, just let me know. Mr. Mayor, I do believe that is all I have for the city manager's report. Thank you. Any questions for the city manager? Council? Yes, sir. Okay. 23 Street. Sure. Is the city now the official owner of those vaults? We have the deeds in our possession. We are. Okay. Yep. Um, do you know there is a homeowner association? I do know there's a something like that up there. There will probably, from what I understand, sometime in the near future, going to be a vote taken to do away with the homeowners association. The city has started for how long you have sold the one right now. Uh, right now, I think we have in our possession either 25 or 26. Okay, whatever you can, you have a vote. So the city has a vote for each parcel, essentially. So the city can overturn that basically by herself. Well, no, it's a homeowner association. You know, they want sure. to get rid of it. You want that part of it. Sure. I remember the former city manager Jones talking about that maybe at last time this was around. So. As of right now, we're only meeting once a year in the board, and that's sometime in January. Well, keep me posted as it goes when it goes, and then if we still have those in our possession, I'll go cast the vote. And usually, Okay. Sure. Thank you. Sure. Anyone else? City manager? Citizens, anything to the city manager at this point? What he's discussed? Yes, sir. If you go to the podium, please. William Lindsay. Uh, on the uh, police negotiations, Sheriff negotiations. Sheriff negotiations. Is that the uh, contract for our deputies? Yes. Okay. Uh, when does that expire? December 31st. The current, when it expires mm -hmm. then? 
Okay. And you guys don't negotiate. You said you were negotiating with a union, too. Which union is that? It's our employee union. It has nothing to do with the sheriff's contract. Okay. Our City union. employees. Yes, they're union Okay. Yep. Okay. Well, I, I thought you were negotiating with their union. No, no. no. <laughs> I'll, I'll let Sheriff Kelly do that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? <clears throat> Any questions? City manager. Okay. Thank you, sir. Sure. Appreciate it. We'll go forward. Uh, now it's comments for members of the public. Anyone like to speak this evening? If you go up to the podium, please identify yourself. Ronald Cobb, 202 Miller Drive. We got some bad sidewalks around this town. Clay Street and on Smith Street. I watched Saturday night kids stumbling. People in wheelchairs falling out of the wheelchairs because there's a couple of places you've got a two inch gap in between the sidewalks. That's something needs to be looked at real bad. And some of them are right up close to where you live, Mr. Zambach. I mean, I'm watching people on these, uh, well, they call them knee scooters, or whatever it is, they're hitting the gaps and they're falling off. Kids are tripping over the, uh, the gaps in the concrete. That's something needs to be looked into. I know it's the property owner's responsibility. That I know. Mr. Kraybacher has brought that up many times, and I know we have. Would you like to say something on this? I can jump in on it, yeah. Please sure. do, go Absolutely. ahead. Uh, last year when I was a planning director, we did the sidewalk repair replacement program up in Northwoods. Uh, huge success. Um, we're gonna start that back up again, but since the transition from me into planning into city manager, uh, we didn't, quite frankly, we didn't have the manpower to do it. It's a lot of work to get up there and do it. Last year when I did the, um, the, the uh, one up in Northwoods, I literally had to walk every every panel. You analyze it, we mark it. It is up to the homeowners for repair. Um, we put it in a position last year that I want to say we had over 70 addresses repair their sidewalks. So a lot of that I think is just uh, educating the public that it is their responsibility because a lot of people don't know that. They assume it's the city's responsibility. It is something that's on our radar to start back up. Um, so we're more than likely gonna do a different part of town uh, in the spring. Well, like I say, I just noticed it on Clay Street, sure. Smith Street. I mean, Smith Street, you got one. It's a good two and a half. I agree with you 100%. <coughs> you know, like I say, I know it is the responsibility of the homeowner. That I do know. But I don't know if the city can, I don't wanna say it. How it works legally by the Harbor Vice Code is we can say if you don't do it, we'll do it, and we can assess your taxes. We don't like to take that route. We would prefer them to work it out um, and do it themselves. Um, the city doesn't have the finances to go ahead and front that kind of money. Like I said, it was a huge success when we did it in Northwoods by people just offering to do it themselves. So hopefully we can mimic that success in a different part of town in the spring. No, I just wanted to bring it here and maybe sure. we can do something about that. And if you are watching at home and if you do have bad sidewalks, they can hold you liable if they get hurt. So take it upon yourself. You don't have to have the city to tell you to do it. If you know your sidewalks are bad, do them. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Now's the time. Yes, if you go to the podium, identify yourself, please. <laughs> Sheila Pearson, uh, 1137 Edgebrook Avenue. A um, couple things. There was some. Um, Could you speak up just a little bit? We're, we're having trouble here. Sorry. Can I get your address again? Please? 1137 Edgebrook. There was con concern about a backhoe that was purchased, and I, I, um, there's just a lot of controversy going around that we spent a hundred thousand dollars on a backhoe when we went so many months without police or, you know, it was just one of those things that maybe you guys could clear it up that, you know, why we bought it versus maybe not fixing the other one or, I don't know, I, mean, I, I don't know that much about it so I can't really explain it. Sure. I know there's always two sides to every story. And exactly, thank so. you for bringing that up. I think the city manager would like to address that also. Tobacco is bought out of a few enterprise funds. So we're looking at a water plant or wastewater plant. Those funds can't be used for police services to begin with. They have to be spent on 
that particular enterprise fund. Now, let me ask you this, ma'am. If you had a used car that was worth maybe $5,000, would you go ahead and pump $3,000 into that car, or would you buy a new car? Uh, I'd probably fix it rather than finance a new car. Okay, I don't think I, mean, I, don't that, think I, 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 I appreciate your opinion. I just don't think that is a majority opinion. Our backhoe was pretty old. Mm -hmm. um, it had lost a lot of horsepower. Um, it was aging pretty bad. It was rusted out at the bottom. Um, we got the backhoe, uh, we got a really good deal on that backhoe. And you're looking at a purchase that's gonna last us for the next 20, 30 years. The city has continuously in the years past band-aid and band-aid and band-aid and band-aid and it gets you, it gets you nowhere. Uh, it may get you by for a year or two, but when you have a machine, like I said, that is very aged to the fact that it doesn't perform, and no repair is going to get that horsepower back. The repairs we were going to do was more for the body, you know, mm -hmm. fixing those rusted out. And you literally had two holes where a guy sits, and you can look down and see the ground. It was beyond pumping <coughs> money, too. And I see on this face value what it looks like. Oh, the city spent X amount of dollars on this backhoe, but in reality, that purchase was put off for quite some time. That if I may add something to that, if you would. I think council looked at it more of a safety feature than anything. The last thing we need is some of our employees getting hurt with that, where it's not functioning properly, uh, not just losing power, but as far as like raising the bucket and so forth, we've got guys down in the hole trying to fix a sewer or water lines. And they're down with this bucket trying to scoop something out. If something malfunctioned and we get somebody hurt, we're on, there's liability big time. That, that, I think, was the main thing that we looked at as a council more than anything, was the liability factor of it not functioning properly. Yes, sir? Yeah, uh, when, when the backhoe issue came up, um, looking at how it was budgeted, when we passed that budget, I don't remember what month it is, um, but it was the cost of it was broken up amongst different uh, city departments. You know, some would be used, like you said, wastewater, streets, whatever. Right, maybe. Price, yeah. um, and we sort of looked at, okay, well, and I remember we asked Mr. Kitko, who's the guy who's in, like sort of like in charge of backhoe stuff. Um, <laughs> so he said, well, you know, could, could we put money in this and fix it? And it, it seemed like it was one of those things where with, with the backhoe, it's, you know, with a car, it's how many miles you drive it. And with a backhoe, it's how many hours it's been used. And I don't, it was a, how old was it? How many years old? It's a 94 and it's got about 4,000 hours on it. And what's the average for hours that you, you, you know, you don't want to go over? Um, I mean, it could be five or six to where it's pretty much hit failure. Uh, most contractors put that in in about a year or two. Okay, so, um, and again, I don't have the data because this was some time ago, but um, the thing was, I guess it, it had been it was about 20 years old, um, had reached sort of the max lifespan that these things usually have. We did budget for it, and I know we were in um, some issues financially, uh, but because we had budgeted for it, and it was a safety feature, of course, no, it's never easy to spend your money. And, um, but it was something we, I guess we went through, at least I voted for it, to go for it because it's something that can then last us another <coughs> 20 years. And so it just, it came at a really bad time. Um, but the thing is when it comes to police and as far as getting the police back, all the effort for that and getting the police back was due to the voters who decided to pass uh, the issue that was on the ballot to, to fund the police. And so big thank you to everyone for that. Um, and then. Aside from the backhoe, we did look at the budget, cut $100,000 out of the budget, did things like combined, combined city positions, cut Westcat, trying to make us fiscally responsible. Um, it was just the issue with the backhoe, I guess, is sort of taking the spotlight, um, and I do understand that. And um, the reason I voted for it, I can tell you, it's because it's something that was, the, the one we have was a clunker, and this is something that can last us another 20 years. And I understand that it may be. Well, sometimes you just need a little background information, some sure. details. Yeah, and I mean, we probably could do a better job at explaining that. Um, mm -hmm. Probably could have put something in the newspaper um, to help better explain at least, uh, well, you know, why the people who voted for it did vote for it. But right. again, with anything, I, there's multiple sides to it, and I can understand arguments that people would have either way. Okay. Uh, yes. Another, I'm sorry. Oh. We have someone else like to go. You want to go? Uh, it's another issue, but are you? Well, I was just, yeah, I was just gonna say real quick. I mean, if you look at a, a lot of the city uh, worker trucks, like you know uh, Ron Routh or Ron Wright's truck, and what's what's that vehicle called? It's a big tank truck. It looks like it's from the forties. The, the sewer jet. Yeah, the sewer the sewer thing. I mean, that thing is ancient. I mean, you know, I, you know, if you look at it, I think the city's pretty good at stretching the, the lifespan of all of its vehicles. You know, you don't see our city 
workers driving around with brand new flashy you know work trucks and things of that nature i think uh, howie's done a pretty good job of stretching the life of, of all their vehicles so uh, i know they had a dump truck or a dump a truck with a dump bed on it and they re-welded the whole new bed up on it to to get another few years but yeah I, i'm with what bill said i think it was just to the point where it, it was it needed replaced it was 20 years old i think maybe just some bad timing with the issues we we're facing exactly. right well um, the other the other thing just to qualify one more time if you would you have you know everybody thinks of them as you have different departments that have money to be spent on different ways so like the city manager said you have the sewer department, you have the water department that the money is coming from for, for that particular backup. It doesn't have anything at all to do with police. It can only be spent on things for those two departments. Okay. So does that enlighten you a little bit more on that? A little compared bit. Compared to, to police? Yeah. That? Yeah. It's like two separate entities. Mm -hmm. It's two separate situations okay. totally. Okay. One more thing. I, is it true that... Um, this is something different, but uh, it kind of puts me in mind of the Madison School that, you know, that was donated to us, right? No. 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 That. Oh. How did we acquire that? Um, it was bought by the city. Oh, it was bought by the city. My okay. My understanding of it, correct? Well, it was bought by a city manager. And I think about that as sitting there and kind of very wasteful and costing money, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, we it's pay. It's a big liability for us, sure. We pay property taxes on it? Mm -mm. No. No. Cities exempt from that. Okay. But you're looking at kids breaking into a lot and looking at liability from that aspect. Well, and what I'm getting to is the are. the uh, Bell Manor mm -hmm. building. Is that something we're going to be acquiring? That will be donated to the city. And now the big difference between Madison School and Bell Manor is Bell Manor's, you can move into it right now. It's a current existing op, uh, op nursing home. It's right. inspected by the state on a yearly basis, if not more. So basically, the condition. It's, it's not even the same scenario. Between well, I just, I, I know it's an older sure. building and I don't think they've done many updates to it. From the Bell Manor Nursing Home? Yeah. I toured it last year, it's pretty good shape. Okay. It, it's in, it's in, I just didn't yeah. want it to be a burden and not sure. you know, a blessing to sure. us as a city, you sure. know. So. You, but we currently rent where we're at, about $1,900 a month. Okay. You know, so that payment will go away. And I'm also looking at getting some um, footprint out here for some county agencies that don't have a footprint out here whether it be health services it could be even uh, clark state we're gonna have a lot of room to expand these services and conditional mm -hmm. things something like that and the property also comes with two houses that could be used as rental income oh, okay so there's a lot of bonuses with that again mm -hmm. i think everybody's just so worried about is it going to turn to a madison school but they're two completely different scenarios okay, okay. i sure. think that's it Thank you for coming. We've never yeah, seen you before. Well, so Mr. Mr. Lowry would like to say something. Bell Manor, within the last five years, has had new roof put on and a total you want some electrical redo. Great. Yeah. Well, when you walk in, it still looks kind of old, but I mean, that's All just cosmetic. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, that's I mean, don't worry about the wall. I mean, that I get, I get what you're saying. Yeah, you walk in there and it does kind of look old, but we're looking at, well, I'm not looking, it's like when you buy a house, people focus, I don't like that purple wall because it's painted purple. Well, we're not worried about that. I can go in there and paint the wall right. I'm looking at structure. Is it move-in ready? We're going to have to do some things. We're going to have to pay to move over there. We're going to have to get some, um, we have to get our um, IT down. From what I understand, we can use a lot of that existing wiring. Okay. So um, there's still a lot to go through, but again, it's not going to turn into a Madison School. Okay. It's just, it, it, it will not. Is there any, <clears throat> any plans on the horizon to work on our roads i know edgebrook is one of the at the top of the priority list mm -hmm. um is there like is there grants that we can try for any anything like that that is a po possibility um yeah i can answer that one uh we currently have the street priority list that uh, you seem to be very aware of uh, we do go out and get grants the problem with a lot of the grant funding is they are um, usually acquired by the low to moderate income areas and those have done, been done in the past by surveys, which are done by the county. And after numerous times to try and get roads done in, in the area, except for the Northwoods uh, flat, uh, no one is qualified. I mean, it's not even close. Okay. Um, Northwoods seems to get that, that grant funding. And even that has really shrunk. And a couple years ago, the street levy um, 
tax or levy was passed. Um, most of those funding is in there except for what we use for the dirt patch and pothole repairs. The rest is still in there. We have used some of the money to uh, use New Carlisle's local match for the apprentice project I got going on right now. And then I have already measured off and got some information. You say Edgebrook, uh, I have an es engineer's estimate of around $200,000 to just mill and overlay. It really needs more than that, but it's one of the newer, newer built roads. Um, and we're looking, uh, right now, it's not 100% uh, definite, but I might be trying to put that out for bid this winter, um, okay. because it will go out prevailing wage. That's what really hurts us on some of these jobs is prevailing wage. So um, the street levy brings us in about, about $120,000 to $140,000 a year. We've had it for about three years. And then, like I said, this will be solely street levy that will pay for the Edgebrook. Mm -hmm. So that will take a $200,000 chunk all in one, one street for the whole city. And that's okay. all of Edgebrook, right? And that's all of Edgebrook from Zimmerman to okay. like. Yeah. So that as is my goal. As long as it's my part, I, no. <laughs> <laughs> no the, um, I want it all. <laughs> that's my goal. One, because the 16 inch water main was laid there in 96. It never got fixed. Um, we do have worse roads in town, but some of those worse roads have the ability to get grant funding. Okay. So I can put those on the back burner till I can get some of that funding to not use okay. all the street levy money on. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm trying for Edgebrook. My goal would then be next year to maybe move it to another section, like say the Willowick area, and just keep moving along. Uh, street repair um, is, is really expensive. Mm -hmm. um, so some streets need full reconstruction where they rip the whole road out, curb gutter, all concrete work. And then some roads uh, like Edgebrook just needs a little bit of what they call milling off the surface and then put new asphalt down. Okay. It doesn't give you 20, 30 years, it gives you more than 10 to 15 year life expectancy. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me. Mr. Zambach has one comment. One little bit of clarification. It was stated that a previous city manager, Mr. Kaplinger, bought the Madison Street School building. He did not buy it. The city of New Carlisle bought it under his direction, and it was approved by the council that was there at that time. You see nobody sitting here that was part of that project. We inherited that, and we have had to deal with it for years and years and years. Uh, one of the people who was on council at that time and did approve it is running again. He was recalled, but I wouldn't mention Daryl's name. <laughs> Thank you. Anybody else like to speak tonight? We have somebody behind the wall. Nancy Lovanovich, 505 Pease Drive, and I need some uh, thinking here. I thought that when we bought that $100,000 one, we bought it because the old one was totally unsafe, but we didn't trade the unsafe one in on the new one. We didn't sell the old one. We're still using the old one. Does that mean we're still fixing the old one? I think the answer should come from our service. Yeah, I, I can answer that. The old one is sitting at our wastewater treatment facility. We have not used it. Okay. Um, all they're using it right now is the front bucket to push uh, the, the sludge right. uh, back in the bed. Other than that, it's, it sits there. We've had to put a couple hundred dollars uh, into that backhoe. And you uh, couldn't have got more money than that selling it? Um, most contractors uh, rotate their equipment within a couple years. Yeah. Um, so most people aren't really looking for something that they're going to have to no, dump. No, but you know. I'm sure there's somebody out there that would need one, I would think. Did you look? Um, we're, we're utilizing, we didn't look at that. Um, I got a quote back from uh, the company that we bought ours from for trade-in, and they were saying, you know, you're probably going to get about 10000 Well, you know, our initial repair that I had put out about 16000 at minimum to get started. Well, we've already had some other things break on it, but those things that broke, we just don't utilize okay. so, it, that's, so it just sits down there kind of um, for their odd and end jobs that that people aren't working around with them is just pushing uh, dirt that we don't want on our new one and i'm not talking soil dirt I'm, all right but so nobody's working on this thing that can get hurt yeah no no one's like the, with the backhoe portion where we're digging in the holes that hasn't i don't even think that's even been used since we've gotten it or the new one okay you're using the old one I'm sorry. You're using the old one for that? Oh, no, no, no. We don't dig any holes with the old one. It's just okay. the new one. 
Oh, I'm sorry, I thought that's what you just said. No, we, we are pushing with the front. Oh. We're just pushing dirt in our uh, down to wastewater plant. Mm -hmm. Basically, a dump truck dumps a load of the um, sludge from the wastewater plant, and they just push it into a pile. So there's no one digging around. It's just the one guy inside for a little bit to push some dirt. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Cobb? Yes, sir, please. <laughs> that way they can hear you on the recording. On the defense of the backhoe to answer this young lady's question, I operate heavy equipment for 34 years. A backhoe has a pump in it anywhere from a four stage to a 10 stage pump at the cost could run up to $10,000 on the pump, correct? Uh, yeah, it go higher. Yeah, ours is a- Well, I mean, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, 40 years ago, you could have bought a new hoe for all oh, right around 30, 40,000. That's 40 years ago. Everything goes up as the year progresses. What he's standing on the backhoe, yeah, you don't want to keep dumping something into a dead horse. That's going to keep costing you money and wasting taxpayers' money. So you go out and buy a new hoe, which has a safe, safety factor on it. Nobody's going to get hurt or killed. What they're using the old hoe for in the wastewater treatment plant, correct? Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with using the front of the bucket, but they're not digging with it. But just so you have an understanding, ma'am, the parts nowadays to replace these, to repair these hoes is way more than what it costs to buy a new one. If they sit back and they, they most hoes have, a two, have two pumps in it. Okay, if them pumps go out, you're looking close to $10,000 per pump. If you can even find one. And even if you can find one to rebuild the parts. So you've got a, what, $16,000 value hoe and you're putting 20,000 in it. You know, that, that leaves a, a better chance on buying, spending 180,000 to 100,000 on a new one. That you're going to get another at least 10, 15 years out of it. Yes, like how he said, or Howard said, yeah, yeah. And, and you pay it out over a period of time also, is what, what we're doing, of course. But, the, but you don't have it where somebody's going to get hurt. Right. And you've got, to, you've got to take that consideration. This city gets somebody hurt and gets sued. I don't want to be around. So it's, it's worth the money to go invest and buy a new hoe, take the old hoe just for pushing sludge or whatever, not putting it out here on the street. But there is a cost factor of repairing these hoes now. It's not like the cost was 30, 40 years ago. Trust me. I just Thank you, Mr. Cobb. Appreciate it. Anybody else? Anyone else? Council, any, anything? Council? Okay, we'll continue on. Committee reports tonight, there's none. Resolutions, we have none. Ordinances, would you, sir, go forward if you would? Ordinance 15-46E, introduction, public hearing, and action this evening. An ordinance, an ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract for liability insurance with USI Insurance Services, LLC, representing the public entity pools of Ohio for administration of said policy and declaring an emergency. Council, yes, Mr. Zip. Move we adopt ordinance 15-46E. Second. And Mr. Mayor, members of council, members of the public, just an explanation of this ordinance. This is a yearly ordinance that we do to have uh, liability insurance for our property and our other assets that we have. There is a slight increase from last year. That slight increase is due to, I added uh, gas to no field to that policy. Um, it was never covered before, so that is the bleachers, that is the field itself, and that is the new building. We also, the city actually owns some guns too at our sheriff's station, so those are now covered and uh, the new backhoe. So the, it went up, the difference is 478 bucks. I also got a quote for the Bell Manor uh, while they were there, which I shared that with council. Uh, the property statement to add that, I mean, the, the value of that building to add to our property statement of values, hopefully that made sense, is $5,382, and the replacement cost of Bell Manor would be 3.6 million. So we did see a slight increase, but I was talking to Councilman Zambach, if you wouldn't mind, go ahead and tell everybody about the gun situation that you had told us about. Oh, yeah. The guns, 
would run at least 2% of the value of the gun to add up to the insurance. So if you had $5,000 worth of guns, 2% of that would be 100 bucks. If, if it was a 5% factor, which it could go to, you'd be at two and a half times at $250 in premium. Guns are expensive to insure, and they calculate that they get a premium for it. Randy mentioned the cost of insuring Bell Manor. That's not part of this policy. We don't have Bell Manor yet. That's, that's still somebody else's deal. He just found out what it's going to cost for the insurance when we finally add it on. So it, at a renewal rate, this is what the, the additional coverage is he added. Essentially, our rate stayed the same. We just got a few more things, and we had to pay a little bit of money for the few more things. So that's, that's good. Sure. Okay. Yes, Mr. McIntyre. And with the extra things added, I know with, when you sent the list out to everyone, there's a number of items, and it only went up $478 from what we had previously had. Sure. That's, that's pretty small when sure. you consider all the things that we have to cover. Well, the, the field was a big one to me. I mean, it's gas in the field. And we got a new building down there at the current leasey uh, built, and then we have the bleachers in the field itself, which is a great asset to the city of New Carlisle to have, so we need to make sure that we, we have some protection on that. And normally we have, uh, for instance, all our automobiles, any kind of uh, automobile backup, anything that uh, gets in an accident, it's usually a $500 deductible um, on all that equipment where most uh, policies now I think are almost up to 1000 uh, I will try to handle that insurance claim myself instead of going through a public entity school and uh, try to save that $500 and do the police report, get with the other insurance company. And it's worked out a couple times, like with our decorative poles if they get hit. It's a five hundred dollar deductible. I've been able to not get that charge um, by the insurance company. Just take care of that myself. So when I have time and I can do that one, I'll will we do that also. So we save there. Thank you. Yes, sir. One other thing I should add. I didn't tell this to Randy. Back when we had the agency, and before I was on city council, I had three different companies to decline to even quote the city's insurance once they found out they were part of the pool. I mean, it just, you can't go in a private marketplace and do a better deal than this. So I'm experienced was very happy with what I'm going to for a good deal. Anyone else? Any other questions? Anything? Anybody? Yes, sir? William Lindsay, how much is this policy, Randy, for a year? $73,839. Is that paid monthly, or how do you, how is that paid? Or is it paid yearly, once a year, once a year? $73,000 a month? $839. Thank you. That's also covering everything that the city owns which is a lot when you look at it, to be quite honest with you. I mean, do we, anybody remember the amount offhand of what we're covering with the city? I think it was over, how many millions was it? Do you remember that? I'm talking oh, about all of our property that we have, the different buildings that we have and so forth. We, we could get that, we'll get that for the next meeting, but I remember it was, it was a large amount. That's one of fire hydrant. Yes, yeah. fire hydrants actually yeah. count as well, on that. You have that? Yeah. Go ahead. Blankets. Blanket buildings. That's all our buildings, the value thereof lumped together. $22,597,679. Now it's inconceivable that we'd have an explosion that would destroy all the nuclear lives simultaneously in all of our buildings. But we have to be prepared to have a total payout of it. So the total value is 22 six million dollars that's a lot of money our personal property which would be this kind of stuff computers things of that nature two million two hundred nineteen thousand dollars these are all valued at replacement cost mm -hmm. not what this table is worth today what would it cost us to go buy a new one today because it's worth five bucks but you can't buy a new one for five so buildings and personal property replacement costs. Seventy-three thousand is a lot of premium, but goodness gracious, it's a lot better deal than if we got to eat twenty-two million dollars on our buildings, or if we got to eat two point two million dollars 
on our property or only a third of that. We just earned, she said only be 700,000, which is 10 years premium in itself. Uh, not even considering the liabilities, we got earthquake coverage, goodness knows why. Uh, we've got several million, we got $2 million of liability insurance per occurrence. I mean, it, it's, it's extensive coverage at the premium. It's an excellent bargain in the insurance marketplace. And we've got to have it. Thank you, Mr. Zambo. Yes, Mr. Mack. I just want to point something out about the earthquake coverage. Um, we don't think about earthquakes in Ohio, but it can and does happen here. It's happened several times. About 10 years ago, there was a big earthquake that uh, knocked down some things in Louisville, which, you know, in geological terms, is not that far from us. So we are, although we're not in the, the ring of fire out in the Pacific, it, it can happen here, and it has happened here. We're on a major, a new Madrid fault line, I think it is. Yeah. Not, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Anyone else? Yes. Does it? I'm sorry? Does that include all automobiles? Yes. Equipment? Yes. Okay. Yes. And with those as well, there's that's gap coverage. There's no gap coverage. What do you mean by gap coverage? Uh, like you was talking about the table, it replaces the table for what it costs to go buy a new one, not what it's worth right now. Correct. If we've got a car ten years old. No, it's not replacing. Okay. That doesn't that's, do that on yeah, vehicles. That's what well. I wondered. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. It's, it's whatever the right. they could okay. replace that particular age vehicle with another. One what they would do just like you would go on Kelly Bruva. Right. Yes, yeah, I was just going to ask, does that also covers our water towers too, does it not? It covers everything okay. the city has. That's all, I just want Utilities, to... sewer main, water, you name it, right. it covers everything. Okay. Right. Yeah, anybody else? Anything? Yeah, I got another question for uh, Howard. That he just said something I wanted to ask him about. You said this insurance policy covers sewer mains and water mains if it, they break? It covers all our infrastructure. So for some reason, a uh, home gets uh, uh, flooded, uh, liability coverage on uh, mains blowing up, uh, or we're jetting. Mm -hmm. We're jetting that main and, and blew somebody's house up with sewer. Those are covered. Um, if you had a, a catastrophe where something got ripped out and it busted our main, we could claim that on insurance. Okay, so if the main just erupts that isn't covered correct okay well that's what i thought you said i thought well, I, yeah. I need to clarify that no, 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 i want no. that insurance yeah. no. <laughs> okay, anyone else if you call for the vote sir mr rick lowry yes mr mike lowry yes mayor mclaughlin yes mr mcintyre yes mr zambach yes mr reynolds yes Passes six to zero. Thank you. You'd read the rest now when you have read when you're Ordinance ready. 15 47 introduction tonight, public hearing and action at the next meeting on 11 16 15. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to submit, to submit consent to the Ohio, Ohio Department of Transportation for a micro surfacing project located within, within the city of New Carlisle. Thank you. Other business. We need to excuse Mr. Craybacher, if you will, please. Mr. Mayor. I'll second. Second. Okay. Okay. You call for the, any any questions? Any comments? You call Mayor for the vote, please. Yes. Mr. Mike Lowry. Yes. Mayor McLaughlin. Yes. Mr. McIntyre. Yes. Mr. Zambach. Yes. Mr. Reynolds. Yes. Craybacher is excused 60. Thank you. And if you would go ahead and read the rest, please. City offices will be closed on Veterans, Veterans Day, Wednesday, November the 11th. City offices will be closed on Thanksgiving Day, no, Thursday, November the 26th, and Friday, November the 22nd, 27th. Prime Watch, next Prime Watch meeting will be November the 11th. That's a Wednesday night, correct? At 6.30 p.m. here at Smith Park Shelter House. Uh, as previously mentioned by the city manager, there'll be a meet and greet uh, for the top three fire administrator chief candidates. November 16th, that's our next meeting uh, during this meeting, and uh, that will occur towards the end of the meeting, so citizens can come and ask questions of those three candidates. That'll be uh, under the other business. 
That's when that will happen towards the end of it. Thank right. you. Executive session, there's none tonight. Uh, one more chance. Anyone else like to say anything this evening? Yes, sir. Well, we've done out here, but I think we have something I want to bring up. Well, go ahead. Okay. And I should have done this earlier, and, but I thought about it and thought about it, and I know that I do now. Okay? Mr. Bridge. Uh, you have Tracy Young, Ronald Graff, and Steve Trusty. Mm -hmm. May I please ask where Steve Trusty is? Um, it says he's from Hubert. He's from Hubert. He's from Hubert. Mm -hmm. He's never served on this fight. He's currently employed. Okay. I, I'm just going to throw my thoughts out there. We all know what we've been through. I have the greatest respect in the world for the fire department based in the military. Okay, so there's nothing to say about it. I don't want to see this city go through what it just went through. I would bet one of these three people were in there. You've got this many people that like them. I'm sorry? You will have this many people that like them. This many people that like I would like to see the total strength. Those who know what that part is. I'd like to see some more people on this list. Sure. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Thank you all for being here. We appreciate it.